Well, hello to everyone once again. Welcome to our weekly opportunity for reflection and discernment or the word for March the 15th of 2023. This is Danny here once again on behalf of all the elders at the Pilgrim Church of Christ with today's study. Well, today's study will conclude our current video devotional series. It's been based upon a study guide found in the New King James Version of the Bible. My wife, Sherry, actually gifted me this one for Christmas of 1991, and I've been using it ever since for my own personal reading and study. Each book of both the Old Testament and the New Testament has a fairly extensive and interesting study guide at the beginning of the book, and this guide is composed of several topical segments, one of which is entitled The Christ of, and then the name of the book that it precedes. And we've been reviewing three books each week as we have been moving sequentially through the entire Old Testament. Last week, or actually week before last, we looked at the trio of minor prophets, uh, the three books of Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah. And here is a synopsis of what we learned about Christ from those three writings. First of all, the Christ of Nahum. Although this prophetic book uh, the writer of this book perhaps points toward Christ the least amount of any in the Old Testament. There are still hints to be found primarily in the first chapter. And we looked at these examples. Verses 2 through 6 tell us there will come a time of judgment. Verse 7 assures the few who hear, repent, and receive grace will find a stronghold and refuge. Verse 12 promises an end to suffering. Verse 13 ensures that the time of the oppressor will be brought to an end. And verse 15 foretells the gospel promise of peace to be fulfilled in the lives of the faithful. And we understand, of course, looking back from New Testament perspective, that each of these prophecies came to fruition only through the person of Christ. Secondly, we looked at the Christ of Habakkuk. We find here another tenuous connection to Christ, but once again, it is there for us to claim once we spend some time contemplating the writer's message. Verse 4 of chapter 2 declares, quote, The just shall live by faith, end quote. Paul directly quotes Habakkuk in his letter to the Roman Christians in chapter 1, verse 17, where he emphasizes the just. Habakkuk's words also appear in Paul's letter to the Galatian Christians in chapter 3, verse 11, this time with his emphasis on shall live. And then finally, Hebrews 10, 38 repeats the quote yet once more, where here the emphasis is on by faith. Although neither of these four instances of, quote, the just shall live by faith, end quote, specifically says so, True students of Scripture know and accept the fact that the faith by which the just shall live must come from, must be centered rather upon Christ. And then thirdly, in our last study, we looked at the Christ of Zephaniah. Once again, we have here a prophet whose writings do not directly mention the coming Christ, and yet twice during his ministry, Christ appeared to have the writings of this prophet in mind, when he spoke of things to come, in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 14, we find Christ referencing Zephaniah 1 verse 3. And then in Matthew chapter 24 verse 29, Christ again recalls the word spoken by the prophet recorded in his chapter 1 and verse 15. Now in both of Christ's statements, he urged his followers, his hearers rather, to own their unfaithfulness, to turn away from sin, and to embrace the salvation of promise to the faithful. Likewise, in both of Zephaniah's statements that Christ was referencing, we find the very same message and urgings to the hearers of his time some 650 years before Christ. So, this week we'll finish our review of how Christ is imagined within the writings of every Old Testament book when we look at the, fi the final three minor prophets, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. First, let's look at the Christ of Haggai. This book speaks to Persia's King Cyrus and especially to his decree that allowed Jews to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. Now, the author was called into prophetic service when the task was still unfinished after 16 years. 
we can see a connection to Christ within each of the two chapters of this prophet's words. First, in chapter 1, it introduces Haggai as God's prophet to Zerubbabel, who was the governor of Judah. Looking backward in the time through New Testament eyes, we see this individual as a type of Christ. The Gospels of Matthew and Luke both trace Christ's earthly genealogy. Matthew's account traces his kingly lineage from King David's son Solomon through Mary's husband Joseph. Then Luke's account traces Christ's priestly lineage from King David's son Nathan through Mary herself. God through Haggai says, quote, I will take you, Zerubbabel, and will make you a signet ring, for I have chosen you. In both family tree listings, we find this Zerubbabel listed in common historically with both lineages, thus fulfilling God's prophecy, serving as a signet ring that would link Christ's kingly lineage with his priestly lineage. Then in chapter 2, we find he speaks of the glories of Solomon's temple and the Jews who bemoan the puniness of its smaller replacement. And yet God prophesied in verse 9 that, quote, the glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, end quote. Centuries later, this prophecy would be manifest every time that Christ, during his ministry within Jerusalem, entered that structure as God incarnate. Then finally, we look at the Christ of Zechariah. Now, there are messianic references abounding within the words of this prophet. Here are ten ways that Christ is portrayed. He's the angel of the Lord in chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. He's the righteous branch in chapter 3, verses, verse 8, and chapter 6, verses 12 through 13. He is the stone with seven eyes in chapter 3, verse 9. He is the priestly king in chapter 6, verse 13. He is the humble king in chapter 9, 9 through 10. He is the cornerstone, the tent peg, and the battle bow in chapter 10, verse 4. He is the good shepherd in chapter 11, 4 through 13. He is the cleansing fountain in chapter 13, 1. He is the smitten abandoned one, chapter 13, 7. And he is the coming judge and the righteous king in chapter 14. Also, here are some prophetic scriptures that we see fulfilled during Christ's ministry. Chapter 9, verse 9 says, quote, Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. End quote. Chapter 11, verse 12 tells us, quote, So they weighed out my wages, weighed out for my wages, 30 pieces of silver. End quote. Chapter 11, verse 13 says, quote, So I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them into the house of the Lord for the potter. End quote. Next, chapter 12, verse 10 says, quote, Then they will look on me whom they have pierced. End quote. And finally, chapter 13, verse 6, we read, And someone, quote, and someone will say to him, What are these wounds in your hands? Then he will answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. End quote. Finally, let's look at the Christ of Malachi. Now, with this positioning as the final book of the Old Testament, Malachi stands in spiritual literature as God's final words to mankind for 400 years. Within the words of this book, as with every other Old Testament book we've examined in this study, we find connections to the Christ about whom so many prophets had prophesied and written. In the third chapter, it speaks of the prophesied Christ's appearance this way. Malachi 3, verse 1, this from the New King James Version. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, end quote. Now this is actually the latter part of that first verse. And in the first part of the verse, we find another divine connection to the New Testament Christ. Reading again from chapter 3 of Malachi verse 1, again from the New King James Version, it begins, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. End quote. 
And just who was that prophesied messenger whom God would send? Well, none other than John the Baptist, the individual chosen by God to break his 400 years of silence with mankind. Take note of this proclamation from God himself regarding Christ's ministry introductory appearance. This appears in John 1, verse 29, and I'll be reading from the easy-to-read version. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, he takes away the sins of the world. End quote. Well, it's taken us some time to do it, but with today's study, we have indeed concluded our study of Christ as he is presented within each book of the Old Testament. I pray that these videos have awakened within each of you a desire to be more watchful of all the ways that, of all that can be learned, rather, about Christ during your own personal study of any book, whether it's a New Testament book or an Old Testament book in the Bible. I am truly thankful for each of you who has taken the time to view this video, and I pray that in some small measure, it might serve as an encouragement as you pursue your daily walk with God. I encourage you to return next week when we will take up another topic of study and discussion, whether it will be a stand-along study or will be the introduction to another study over a study series over a period of weeks remains to be seen. Please do remember that the Church of Christ at Pigram maintains an ever-growing repository of various worship and study videos. They are being produced and archived regularly each week, and they are all available to be accessed at any time for you to view and to listen to at your own convenience. They are available at the following sites. First, we have the Pigram Church of Christ page in Facebook. Then we have the Pigram Church Media page in YouTube. And for the members of our Pigram Church family, we have our Pigram Church of Christ app available to download onto your smartphone, and you can access them from there. I pray God is continuing to bless you and your family daily with good health and with safety. If you're not already doing so, I would encourage you to develop the discipline of setting aside a portion of each day and spend it in a couple of activities that will hopefully advance you spiritually. First, spend time reading God's Word. Let God speak to you through whatever passage of Scripture you might choose to read. Secondly, take time to daily lift up your prayers to God. Make your needs, make your thankfulness, make your concern for others known to Him. If any of you should be seeking a church home and community of faith in which you and your family might enjoy spiritual fellowship and growth, then I invite you to check us out at Pigram. I can assure you, you will receive a warm welcome should you decide to do so. The elders of the Church of Christ in Pilgrim continue to make ourselves available to assist anyone who might have spiritual needs that you feel we can help you address. Please feel free to contact any of us at any time. We can be reached for a Bible study, for prayer time together, or just to spend some time together talking among ourselves and getting to know each other a little bit better. My custom throughout this series has been to end our time of study by reading one additional passage of Scripture especially one that I believe speaks to us regarding today's message. For our closing lesson, I can think of no better suited passage than the following one from the writer of the letter to the first century Hebrew Christians. This is from the 12th chapter of Hebrews, the first three verses, and this comes from the translation known as The Voice. Quote, So, since we stand surrounded by all those who have gone before an enormous cloud of witnesses, let us drop every extra weight, every sin that clings to us and slackens our pace, and let us run with endurance the long race set before us. Now stay focused on Jesus, who designed and perfected our faith. He endured the cross and ignored the shame of that death because he focused on the joy that was set before him, and now he is seated beside God on the throne, a place of honor. Consider the life of the one who endured such personal attacks and hostility from sinners so that you will not grow weary or lose heart, end quote. Now, until our next study time together, please remember I love each one of you. I ask you to take care. Goodbye.